big plans coming out of Russia. It has just been reported from a Russian source that Pope Francis plans to stop by Moscow on his way to Mongolia towards the end of August or the beginning of September. The idea is that the airport would be a secure and safe area for Francis to stop in and, you know, maybe have a little Starbucks with Patriarch Kirill. Patriarch Kirill is the Orthodox Patriarch of Moscow. He is the titular head of the Russian Orthodox Church, and he has seemed open to conversations with Francis. And it seems Vladimir Putin is also keen on this idea. Before I talk about it, before I talk about Fatima a little bit, the Eastern Church, I'm going to talk a little about Garabandal, though I continue to remain skeptical about Garabandal. I'm first going to say I'm a little skeptical of the source in itself because it comes from a representative of the old believers. The old believers are a traditionalist group going back, I think, to the 1600s, might have that wrong, who wanted to preserve more ancient Slavonic liturgical usages and not be conformed to the Greek usages at Constantinople. A representative from the World Union of Old Believers has said this, quote, the Pope proposes to meet with Patriarch Kirill. And by the way, Kirill is just the Greek or Russian pronunciation of Saint Cyril, how we say it in the West. To meet Patriarch Kirill without delay at one of Moscow's airports on his way to flying to Mongolia. Then he will be able to refuel at Moscow and go upon his way. So the idea here is Pope comes in, flies into Moscow, he's in the terminal, and Patriarch Kirill's standing there with like one of those limo driver signs and says Francis on it. And like, hey, and they hug, and then they maybe, I don't know in Moscow what they got. They go to like the American Express Centurion Lounge. They don't have that. Maybe they go to Starbucks and uh, they get a drink. They got a little lay over here in Moscow and Francis and his entourage meets Patriarch Kirill. Maybe Kirill brings in Vladimir Putin. Wouldn't that be a photo op? That'd be interesting. I'm going to check my audio real quick because last time I streamed, we had some audio problems. Looks like it's good. Yeah, here we go. Uh, I like this. Koffenberg says Kirill doesn't serve apple teenies. That's true, but he might have a latte. What would they drink? I, I think Francis kind of in Italy, he probably just, you know, he probably simple, maybe espresso, cappuccino in the morning. That's a Pope Francis Bergoglio coffee. Vladimir Putin, I think he's going to go straight up dopio espresso, two shots, especially in the morning. I see that's a, that's a Putin. And then Patriarch Kirill, I mean, he wears the white hat. I think he's going to go with a latte, something milk-based is what I'm thinking. They're going to sit there, and what are they going to talk about? I would love to hear Patriarch Carol's perspective on popes consecrating Russia to the Immaculate Heart. Now, the big story here is Fatima, Our Lady of Fatima. I was just in Fatima with the pilgrimage New St. Thomas Institute, beautiful, wonderful pilgrims. Howdy to all you pilgrims that were with us. We went to Fatima. I was a little disappointed by some of the modernist architecture, modernist art. But being in the place where Our Lady spoke to Lucia was in Jacinta. I mean, that was just... In fact, I took a picture with Jacinta's cousin, knee, something like that. Met her there at Fatima. Very powerful. But at Fatima, Our Lady says that the pathway to peace in the world, that pathway to peace is through Russia. The Immaculate Heart of Mary, the Pope consecrating Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, that's the, that's the pathway to global peace. 
So peace and renewal of the Catholic Church has to do with Russia, the conversion of Russia. And we are in such a mess in the West. I mean, we are in, it feels like we're in the great apostasy. Like, the West is a mess. At least Russia is post-communist. We're just now getting into it. And maybe, just maybe, the church will be renewed from the East. That's more and more I'm starting to believe that something from the East will reestablish the West. And maybe it's a perennial penance. You know, all the early heresies were fermenting and coming out and flowing out of the East. Arianism, Nestorianism, the Monophysite heresy, the Monothelite heresy, Iconoclasm, lots of heresy. Maybe the penance, maybe the renewal is that the Eastern churches reestablish that which is lost in the Roman patriarchate, in the Roman rite. We've trampled our liturgies, we've trampled our rites, we've defaced our churches. Even Fatima. There's ugly, weird things at Fatima. Don't like it. Don't like it. Don't like what they've done to the tomb of Padre Pio. Don't, Lords, Our Lady of Lords, we went there, glorious, beautiful, but then they have a Father Rupnik mural on the facade of the five luminous mysteries. Why do this? Why? Why deface the sacred? The East has been under the heavy pressure of communism, martyrdom, all kinds of suffering. They're kind of already through that other side. Maybe it's the Eastern Catholic churches. Maybe it's the Eastern Catholic churches that revitalize the West. They didn't change, they don't have a Novus Ordo Liturgy of St. John Chrysostom. They don't have a Novus Ordo ordination rite. They don't have a Novus Ordo Eastern baptism. All their liturgies, maybe not the Maronites, I think they toyed with things, their liturgies are intact. And if the Russian church, think about this, it's the biggest Eastern church. If the Russian church were to convert and submit and be in union, somehow with the reestablishment of the West, that would be amazing. I mean, that would be so powerful. And maybe that's what Fatima is all about. Maybe there's this mystery with Russia and Moscow and the Immaculate Heart of Mary that is part of this end times drama that we're experiencing. I'm starting to believe that. Maybe we who study Fatima and have a devotion to Our Lady of Fatima, maybe we need to realize that something in the East, Our Lady, through the prudence of Jesus Christ, her Son, is indicating to us that something from the East is happening. And this, this sort of dance between Putin and Kirill and Francis Bergoglio, that's been going on for a while. I remember, I believe it was 2016, I was staying in the Vatican. I was teaching seminarians in Rome, and I went for a jog early in the morning. And I like to run around Vatican City because you get to run around a whole country. It's kind of cool. You can say, I think it's only two and a half miles or something. You're like, hey, what did you do this morning? I ran around a whole nation, Vatican City. But I was running through with my son. Gabe, we were running through St. Peter's Square, and we were stopped by guards. Never happened before. You can't be here. It's like, you can run in St. Peter's. Not today. I said, well, why? Why can't we be at St. Peter's? He goes, because Vladimir Putin's here today. And they pointed 
to like these armored vehicles that were kind of on the outside of the St. Peter's Square. Like you can't, you can't run in today. Because usually St. Peter's Square is in the morning, you know, 5 a.m., 6 a.m., it's empty. There's birds and like maybe a homeless person. If that, nobody's there. Vladimir Putin was there that day. And Vladimir Putin, to give him credit, when he visits the Pope, he gives him a real icon. Zelensky of Ukraine gave him that icon with the with Jesus, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, blacked out. Putin has some interest here. What's going on? I don't know. Kirill seems to have some interest here. What's going on? I don't know. But what I do think is that something from the East will ignite the West. Because, I I mean, let's be honest. It's been kind of a downward spiral since the 60s out here in the West. West Side is not real hot. West side and the church is kind of depressing, right? We're, we're down. I mean, there's good things happening in Africa, Asia, and all that. But when you look at the ancient patrimony of the west side of the church, Roman patriarchate, it's not good. Maybe the east, maybe the conversion of Mother Russia. The hunt for Red October. Now, don't 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 hear me saying that I think Vladimir Putin's a saint or Kirill's a saint or the Russian Orthodox Church is all legit. Extra ecclesia no salvos. Outside the church is no salvation. You got to be in the one true church. But we have seen over the centuries the Eastern churches, the Armenians, the Ruthenians the Maronites, even groups of the Coptics in Egypt have submitted themselves to the popes. Pope Eugene IV, Pope, I think it happened under Pius V as well, happened in the 1800s. These Eastern churches coming in, and all these, they have valid sacraments. All these Eastern churches have to do is come in, They did have to accept the Tridentine doctrine of the seven sacraments. I went and read actually the the reconciliation documents of the Armenians yesterday or two days ago. They did have to accept the Tridentine statement on the seven sacraments. They did have to accept that the filioque was not per se heretical. I don't think they have to say it in their creed, but they have to say that us saying it's not wrong. And then they just have to be in union with the Pope. Thank you for Russia, Mother Russia. Mother Russia. I think if they came in, be awesome. Be great. All that strength for good. All that strength for the greater glory of God. For the empire of Jesus Christ. Be incredible. Be incredible. I don't know what God's up to. I think this is interesting. I think perhaps... If you believe in Our Lady of Fatima, let me, let me leave you with this. If you believe in Our Lady of Fatima, in our current time, the most interesting narrative to follow is Russia. What's going on with that? And to have Francis Bergoglio hanging out in the airport terminal with Patriarch Kirill, and I hope that, uh, Vladimir Putin, that'd be cool. Cool photo op. They got their Starbucks sitting in the little chairs, you know. Airport terminal. That'd be interesting. I would love to hear that conversation between those three men. Or maybe those three men represent a deeper and greater apostasy on earth and there's something else to come. I'll leave you on that note. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like the video. Make sure you subscribe. And remember, our Lord Jesus Christ is the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So go out there and be salty. God bless and Godspeed.